team is rich with Kestova. We all know why we're here. It's another midweek in the holidays. That means more PE problems to get you ready for the PE exam. Let's jump into today's problem. We have a one-story steel-framed building. Um, it has earth burned on one side. The toll, which just means that there's earth pushed up against one side of the building. Uh, the total resultant load from the earth pressure is 600 kips and is uh, resisted entirely by the three shear walls as shown. So shear wall A, B, A, B, C. Uh, wall A is 12 inches thick. All right. Uh, walls B and C are 14 inches thick. The roof is framed with steel joists and corrugated steel deck. No concrete. What is most nearly the shear load on wall A? So there's our question. We always check that first to make sure we know exactly what we're looking for. Uh, this one is trying to trip you up. So the only thing complicated about this is understanding if whether this is a flexible diaphragm or a uh, rigid diaphragm. That is gonna control how your forces get distributed to the shear walls. So with a rigid diaphragm, the forces are distributed based on relative stiffness of your shear walls, um, which thickness of shear walls, um, properties of those shear walls, that all matters. So this case, they give us some information talking about that, so maybe we're leaning towards that way. And flexible diaphragms are just dependent upon the tributary width in terms of distributing forces to each of the shear walls. So if there's, you just take literally the trip width between shear walls, and it's that easy. Um, today, this whole problem looks like it's set up that we would need to run calculations for a rigid diaphragm. But actually, the big key component here, right here, no concrete. So just the steel corrugated decking, which is typical for a lot of roofs, um, for metal buildings, is a flexible diaphragm. So something that's beneficial, I think, is to make a quick little list for everyone that gives at least some real real common flexible and rigid diaphragms. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have rigid is concrete deck, concrete PT decks, slab on metal deck, and that is, for those who don't know, I'll make a quick sketch of it. That's when you have corrugated decking but you actually cast concrete on top of it. And that creates a rigid diaphragm. Sometimes that's where you kind of get into the weeds, whether it's uh, rigid or semi-rigid, but we weren't, we're not gonna go there today. Uh, then from there, pretty much, that's, that's relatively it, unless you, you can start to get into some real custom stuff. Um, you can do some hybrid slides, a whole, bu whole bunch of different stuff. Mostly when you're working with concrete, that is just right off the bat rigid, so remember that. Then you have flexible, and that's gonna be, you know, wood, wood plywood diaphragms, steel corrugated deck. And off the top of my head, I honestly can't think of any others right now, but that's a quick little list that you can write down yourself and keep, you know, paste that into one of your books that you're gonna be taking for the PE, or just really drill that home that, that these are rigid, these are flexible. It's really gonna help you out in the future. So, getting back to this problem, even though they're setting up the problem to make it feel like it should be analyzed as a rigid diaphragm, it's not. This is just a corrugated steel deck with no concrete topping, so this is a flexible diaphragm, so this actually becomes very, very simple. We'll walk through it now. You have a 600 kip, we'll call that P, 600 kip lateral load, and because load distribution is just purely based on trip width, we need to uh, find what our tributary width is for wall A. Wall A is what we're looking for. If we go up to our diaphragm here, or our, yeah, our diaphragm here, in our plan view, this, we'll call that W, is gonna be our trip width for wall A. And that is just W, is gonna equal the 15 feet, because that's everything on this side. That all gets distributed to uh, shear wall A, and then it's one half the distance between A and B, 
which is um, 20 feet. So it's one half of 20 feet, and it's the full 15 feet. So 15 feet plus 20 feet over 2, that gets you 25 feet of tributary width. Well, now you're looking at that 600 um, kip point load on there, but that is, uh, they've said, is just the resultant load, and lateral loads are going to be distributed um, basically in, in a linear fashion along the diaphragm. As you can see kind of denoted here by this speckled, that's the dirt, um, which is all along that shear wall. So we actually need to take that 600 kip point load and break it down into a line load, a distributed uh, line load along the diaphragm. So that's really simple, right? That's just P divided by L, L being the full length of the diaphragm. So L is 42.5 feet plus 42.5 feet. L is going to equal 85 feet. So P over L is just 600 kips. You guys are rolling on this now. I know, I know. 600 kips divided by 85 feet. That gets us 7.058 KLS. So that's kips per lineal foot. And now you just multiply that by your trib width for shear wall A, which we know is W, which we know is 25 feet. So now you have 7.058 KLF times 25 feet. Our units all work out, so kips per lineal foot times 25 feet gets you kips. And that is just going to equal... Uh, we can call it P sub A, so the force at wall A is going to equal 176.5 kips. Boom. Let's see. I like it. Let's see what we got. Answers. 176 kips. I mean, that's going to be as close as you're going to get there. Uh, kips is the units that they give for the problem. We have kips as our final solution, so that's looking good in my book. That's as easy as it is. I mean, in the professional world, and... I say it in the professional world, but just in general, flexible diaphragms are really easy. They're really straightforward like that. Once you, just being able to distribute loads per tributary width, that's that's real straightforward. We can all wrap our heads around that. So it gets a little more complicated when you get into rigid diaphragms and you have to do relative stiffness. So that we're not doing today. That's going to be another episode. This is all we got today. Quick little mini for everybody. Get back on that study wagon. If you liked this video and previous videos, leave a like if you'd like. <laughs> like if you like. No. Uh, leave a like or, or comments, anything that you might like about this video. It always helps out the channel. It helps out the team. It helps us grow. And it helps us reach more people. So there's nothing better than that. Uh, and until next time, this is Rich with Kesteva. I will see everybody later.